Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Southern Bel Canto Books, Bags, and More. Today, I want to do a video talking about my August and also my September books that I read. So the first books that I read in August, it was a little bit small. I was really busy and kind of in a reading slump, so it's not as much as I usually like to do. So in the month of August, I read the first book in a series by Catherine McGee. And this is the American Royals. It was a really cool book, the idea I really liked. So it was basically about if America, like back when George Washington was like winning the war, I guess his Revolutionary War, <laughs> not very good at history, um, if he had decided to become the, pre uh, the king of America instead of the president, because I think the generals and people were like, ooh, George Washington, you should be the king of America. We're a new country. We need a king. And so he actually, in real life, he decided to become just a president and have a term and whatever. But this book was, what if George Washington had agreed to become the king of America? So these are actually American royals. They are the, like, has a little, like, House of Washington. So, like, the six generations or so of the royal Washington family. So this has the heir, Princess Beatrice Washington, the future queen of America, the spare, which is her second sibling, so the heir and the spare, which is Princess Samantha. And then they also have a brother, which I think his name was Prince Jefferson. I'm not fully sure it doesn't say so. It was a cute book. It had a lot of potential. It was fun. I really like the idea of this sort of like different world of America. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, it kind of lost steam for me and there was this love triangle that I really just didn't care about. In my opinion, I would have liked it more if it was more of a new adult genre. So like, you know, 18 to like 25. To me, this was more written as a teen book, even though the characters were like around like 17 and a half to like 22. It would just read more like a teen book and I was wanting more of a new adult or, you know, adult fiction. Just, it felt a little more teen than I like. But I really did enjoy the story. There is a sequel, I believe it's called Royal Wedding. I'm not fully sure if I'll pick it up just because the book was good, but it wasn't the best. It kind of went away from what I wanted it to be. I don't know. I guess I had a different expectation. If people have read the sequel and it's better or it's, you know, enjoyable, let me know. I might pick it up. So this was American Royals by Catherine McGee. The next book I read in the month of August was fabulous. Oh, before I jump into my next book, I believe I gave this three stars, three out of five stars on Goodreads. So pretty good. I mean, most people give books like a three, so that's why on Goodreads, everyone, every book is basically rated like 3.8 because it's like between people that gave books a one and a five, so I gave it a three. It was good. Sorry. <laughs> so back onto my next book, five stars. Love the book. Love the series. This was book, let me check, book, uh, one, two, three, four. Book four in the Bridgerton series. Sorry if stuff's backwards. <laughs> My first video. Um, this is Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. Love the title. I love the the cover of the mirror on the bed sheets. There's not a mirror <laughs> mentioned in the story, but I just like it. It's kind of like that throwback romance novel. And this is the romance between, spoiler alert if you love Bridgerton, this might have some spoils, but this is the romance between, spoil ahead, Penelope and Colin. They kind of set that up in the series, and I mean, you kind of want it to happen, but it happens. It's the romance between Penelope and Colin. Um, I don't want to give too many spoils because, spoilers because I don't like spoilers, but five stars. Penelope is such a great heroine. She's so funny and witty and just so endearing. You want to root for her. She's kind of like the underdog in a way, and it's just fun to see that like ugly duckling or underdog get this fun romance. I really enjoyed it. So this was the romance between 
Penelope and Colin absolutely loved it. Loved, I've loved every Bridgerton book. The one I didn't love the most was um, book two, The Viscount Who Loved Me. Great title, good story. I am very excited for season two of the show. Hopefully it comes out in like December, although I think it said 2022, so hopefully February, like Valentine's Day. But every other book I've given five stars to, so I think The Viscount Who Loved Me, I gave four, but it was, it just kind of lost interest, but... Hopefully, I need to reread it or something, but I love the Bridgerton books. All right, and the third and final book I read for August, this one I picked up at Walmart. It's a, actually a reprint, so this is the new um, Mac, I believe they're called the Max Market paperback. So here is a Mass Market, is the Julia Quinn Bridgerton, and this is the Max Market, so it's a little bit bigger, which I like. I've been kind of buying them up just because the print's bigger and they're a lot easier to hold. You don't end up bending the spines. Sorry. This book is by Lindsay Sands and it's called What She Wants. Um, from, sorry, from the cover, I thought that this was going to be a Western. I don't know why. I just saw like the leather shirt and I completely overlooked that there's a castle. <laughs> behind all that and this is actually a medieval romance so it, I think it takes place in like 7 is that right no 11 so super middle ages set in like 11 to like 1200 something in England um I gave this two stars I did not really like it it it, it was a fast read. I read it in like two or three days, which can be good or bad because sometimes I'm reading it really fast because I really love the book. Sometimes I'm reading really fast because I'm ready to get it over with. And this one, I was sort of ready to get it over with. I had this really long, drawn out section of him having boils on his tuckus, and I, was, I wasn't into that. I mean, like, he had like some cyst or something on his butt, and it was like, ugh. How is that sexy or cute or funny? Apparently, this author does that kind of humor in her books. That was like a big thing I saw on Goodreads. Like, oh, that was so funny. I'm like, ew. I thought that was gross. He had like a boil on his butt, and it was a long, drawn-out situation for him. Um, this did have adventure and romance, but I don't know. I just, I didn't, I didn't love it. It had some, some sort of themes I saw like in... Um, The Princess Bride, I couldn't, yeah, that's the title. <laughs> I've never read the book, but I've seen the movie. But, um, it kind of reminded me a little bit of The Princess Bride, but more so just the, <laughs> the setting and characters, not really so much the plot. Had some adventure, but not enough to be an adventure book. The romance was all right. They were sort of like destined to be together. So, wasn't my favorite. I gave it two stars. Um, I don't know if I'm going to read another one by this author. It just, it didn't hold my interest. I really like Regency romances the best or like between 1700s to like early 1900s England or America. But yeah, I thought this was a Western, but this was medieval. So if you like medieval romances that are a quick read and I don't know, it was okay. I don't know. I, if you like this, if you like medieval, I think you'd like this book. All right. So in um, September, which is still September when I'm filming, but I want to go ahead and film, I read six books, which was my goal. I wanted to read six books. I don't know the last time I've read six books in a month. It's probably been a while. So I really wanted to like up my ante and like set a goal for myself. And I actually took a lot of days off. I took like almost a week off without reading this month. So I really think I could have hit a higher goal, but I want to keep my goal between like six to eight books a month. I just, I like to watch TV. I like to watch movies and I work. So I wanted to have enough time to do other stuff. And so in September, I read six. I'm actually started my seventh book. I might finish it before the end of September. It might be my first book for October but I'll show it to you at the end. So this is in order. Um, 
I think I actually finished, I started this the end of August and finished it September 1st, so I'm counting it as my September. And this was the Undercover Duke by Samantha Jeffries. This is another um, romance I picked up from Walmart in the romance section. They get new ones at my Walmart about every week to every two weeks, so I go there and pick out a new one because they're cheaper there, usually cheaper than Amazon. Um, the, there's not a lot to pick from, but I just picked the ones I think I'd like. And this is actually from a series. And the series is called Duke Dynasty. Unfortunately, though, I didn't know this was a series. And you sort of do need to read this series in order. And this is like book four. So I had a little problems with continuity because I, I didn't, I knew it was a series. But some, you know, you don't really have to read them in order. This series you sort of do. And I really like the plot of this. So this is about um, Sheridan and Vanessa. And he is trying to solve the murder of his father. And so you guessed it, he's a Duke going undercover. And he meets Vanessa, who he thinks that her mother or someone in her family possibly killed his father. And so he sort of goes undercover to be her suitor or lover. But um, Vanessa also has a plot twist. She is like sort of might have to be set up with this older kind of like ooh, guy and so whenever she sees the duke i think they go to the opera house or the play um she sort of is like hey um i'll be your like undercover girlfriend slash um betrothed but you need to help me out too and kind of get this creepy guy away from me so there's kind of a enemies to lovers trope which is really fun and also just this sort of mystery hidden in the story as well i gave this book I believe four out of five stars and it was mostly because continuity issues because I didn't know that this was this um, was in a series I didn't know really what to do with it so hopefully I get better at I hopefully I can pick my books a little better because this one was a series and oh I had some questions the next book I read in September I really liked. I gave it five stars. I saw this at Barnes and Nobles actually. And this was Mr. Malcolm's List. This I really enjoyed. Um, to me, it reminded me a lot of a Jane Austen novel. So it was uh, clean, you know, no um, swearing or sex scenes, or I don't really think they were sexual innuendos. So if you're wanting either a clean book or um, you're a young reader, like, high school and you don't want to read graphic scenes, if you don't want your students to read graphic scenes, I really enjoyed this romance. Um, so this was a lot like Pride and Prejudice in a way. It talked about Mr. Jerry Malcolm and Selena. And Mr. Malcolm has this list of like what he's looking for in a wife. He's a duke of a, is he a duke? I'm sure he is. They're always a duke. Yeah, he's like a duke <laughs> of a certain age. He needs to probably get married soon. And this woman, oh goodness, what is her name? Does it say so? Julia. Julia was really thinking she was going to be Mr. Malcolm's bride. She really thought they're going to hit it off. They're going to be in a relationship. It's all going to work out. They're going to get married, have babies, be rich, you know, <laughs> life goals. But she did not meet up to his list and she found out about the list and so Julia sort of like hires her friend Selena to basically um, play a trick on Mr. Malcolm and basically be everything that is on his list to be the perfect bride for him. So um, Selena and Malcolm hit it off actually initially they meet without knowing each other or their pretenses and kind of hit it off. And then they're like, Selena, knowing that she has to play this trick on him, is like, oh no, I actually kind of like him. And so she plays the trick to be the perfect wife, but without giving spoilers, he may or may not know for a while what's going on. Is it a trick? Is it true love? Um, this was a great book. I gave it five stars. Um, it's soon to be a major, major motion picture, which is exciting. I think it is going to be a Netflix movie, which I'm happy for. I mean, Bridgerton's on Netflix, and I love romance novels, and 
I really enjoyed this. If you like Jane Austen novels, if you like that sort of um, style of writing in a way, it wasn't written like on the same like vocabulary level or anything like a Jane Austen novel, but it was written in that similar style of romance. You know what I mean? I really enjoyed this again. yet again. I would recommend it. This is Mr. Malcolm's List, and it is by Suzanne Alain Alman. And she also might, I don't know if it's a sequel or if it's another standalone, but she has another book out as well, and I hope to pick that one up. All right, my next book for September was another Bridgerton. It was book five in the series, and it was to Sir Philip with Love. This is, of course, by Julia Quinn, and this is about... Um, Eloise and Sir Philip. Without giving too much away, Eloise finds out that her like fourth cousin has unfortunately passed away, so she writes condolence letters to his widower, his widow, his widower. The <laughs> she writes to her cousin's husband, and she has since passed. And so she, they have this like year long correspondence. And they've really hit it off. They've grown to really like each other, know about each other, and maybe fall in love with each other. And Mr. or Sir Philip, I should say, um, has a letter that he sends to Eloise saying, hey, I think this could work. Would you like to come here with a chaperone and potentially see if we'd be a good match for marriage? I think we could be a good match for marriage. And so Eloise decides to go in the middle of the night on chaperoned to Sir Philip's estate without telling anyone. And lots of fun things happen. This was a really funny book. If you like family humor, like um, sibling, sibling jokes and um, siblings protecting each other without knowing the full story, this was a fun book. I gave it five stars. I read it in like two days because I couldn't put it down. This was with the earlier one, The What She Wants by Lindsay Sands. I read it fast because I didn't like it. This one I read fast because I couldn't get enough. I loved it. Five stars. Um, book five in the Bridgerton. It's Eloise, who's a fan favorite on the show. She's a great character. She's really similar to her stage presence as she is in the books, which if you like that character from the show, you'll really like this one. Um, one thing to note with the Bridgerton books, you can read the epilogues, but the second ep epilogues don't read until you've read the whole series. I made that mistake and read the second epilogue to The Duke and I, the first book, and it gave a lot of spoilers, and that was really, like, annoying. So, if you want to read the epilogue, that's fine. The second epilogue, spoilers galore. So, I'm actually going to read all of my second epilo epilogues after I finish the whole series. Oh, this is a really good one. I really like this one. This one was The Princess Stakes by Amelie Howard. Wonderful book. Absolutely wonderful. This was another one I gave five stars to. This is about Princess Sarani Rao and the Duke of Embry. Uh, I believe his name is Riston. I, in my head, called it Riston. Wonderful book. Um, this was really exciting because um, this is an interracial romance. Um, Princess Sarani is half Pacific Indian, half English. Uh, Riston is a full blue-blooded uh, aristocrat from England. They have known each other, so they're kind of like childhood friends to lovers, but also enemies to lovers. So lots of plot twists, lots of adventure. A good portion of this takes place at sea. Princess Sarani ends up going on this boat because of assassination attempts and potentially she could be murdered because people do not want her to be the queen of, of her land. So this was fabulous. I loved this book. I really want more. I want more interracial romance in historical fictions. Oh, I just, I loved it. I believe Omni Howard has a sequel. I, I'm not fully sure, but I do think that might also be another interracial romance. So I'm excited for that. I believe, I haven't checked, but I need to, I need to look. I believe it is a romance between Riston's sister, which she was a good, fun character. And does it show 
what rules for heiresses i believe is the sequel or the next in the series this was fabulous though this is the princess stakes by amelie howard wonderful five stars excellent all right here was another dud so this was out of all of the books i believe that i've read this one was also rated a two on goodreads this is really not my style this was, um, I picked this up because of um, the YouTuber Books with Samantha. She talked about it in a couple, um, in a couple of her vlogs. It was, I think she used it in her um, reverse ham vlog series. And I don't know, maybe, um, I don't know, bisexual threesome? something or other she had it in two of her videos i'm pretty sure and she recommends this a lot on her um her instagram but this was learn my lesson by katie roberts this is my first book by katie roberts this is i believe book two in her wicked villain series so this series is about um retellings of disney villains like this is i'm gonna be honest this is disney erotica and it's kind of it's kind of funky. So that's, if you're not into erotic literature, if you're not into BDSM, or um, this was um, a lot was bisexual, you're not gonna like this book. And um, that was all okay. It's not my favorite. I don't, eh, not my style. I like my historical romances, but I wanna give this a try. I like to read different genres of romance. Romance is my favorite. I've read other books similar, like I read the, um, it's by Anne Rice. It's like the the Taming a Sleeping Beauty or something like that. It's like the Sleeping Beauty um, BDSM series. It's it's funky. I don't think I finished it. But this one I, I was more interested in if this was set like in ancient Rome. I like ancient Rome a lot. I enjoyed the show um, Rome on HBO. But this was set um, in present day. And so that's why I really didn't like it. Once I found out this was a present day novel and not written in ancient Rome or the setting was in ancient Rome with like the gods and goddesses and all that, um, I wasn't interested. Oh, gods and goddesses. So this is a romance between Hades, god of the underworld, Megara, aka Meg, and Hercules. So if you know the Disney film Hercules, um, this was basically a BDSM bisexual romance between her, um, Hades, Hercules, and Megara, aka Meg. It had some other um, Disney characters featured as well. It had Aurora and Tinkerbell, which I like Tinkerbell. She was a fun sidekick character, and she's actually the, um, the lead for the third book in this series, which is, I want to say it's Hooked. No, A Worthy Opponent. So this is book two in the Wicked Villain series. The first one is between Jasmine and Jafar, which I didn't, I probably, I might read that one. I didn't like this one, but maybe that one's a little different. And um, the third one is Tinkerbell and I believe Hook. And I really liked Tinkerbell in this book. She was a fun character. So I, I might pick up the other two. I gave this two stars. It was a lot because, I don't know, just not, I wasn't in like a, uh -huh. it's, you know, it's hardcore, so. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> the next book, um, I gave five stars to. I finished it yesterday. This is one of my favorite series, The Wilds of Winlow, The Wilds of Winlow Castle. This is book five, and this is by Eloisa James. I absolutely love Eloisa James. She's one of my favorite romance authors. She's the first historical romance author I ever read. I randomly checked out, I believe the first book is called Born to Be Wild. I got it from the library and loved it. And no, the first book, I'm sorry, is Wild in Love. Wild in Love. They all sort of have wild in the title or Duke. And this is book five and it's called Say Yes to the Duke. And this is the story between um, Miss Viola Astley, who is um, basically a wild. She, her mother married into the wilds. Her father, I believe, died. And so she's the step daughter of the duke and the stepsisters of the wild siblings but she's fully accepted as a wild and she is a wallflower she is not about that guy life 
she literally throws up if she has to go to balls and other meetings. She is so scared of men, basically. And she accidentally sees this woman, like, trying to force a man into marriage by being caught. Because back then, you could ruin someone's reputation. You got to get married. So, she sees that and she's, like, really freaked out. So, she ends up wanting to actually marry the new vicar. So, there's this young, good-looking male priest. And they're, I believe, Anglican, so they can get married. Um, and she really wants to marry the vicar, but he's sort of, like, almost engaged to someone else. So, she's trying to get over her fear of men, fear of um, intimacy. Um, you know, she's just, she's young, she's naive, she uh, is a wallflower. She's not about that party life. And so she goes to the ball. She's gotten more confidence. She um, really wants to like prove to the vicar, hey, I'd be a great vicar's wife. Well, anyway, she catches the attempt attention of uh, Devin, the Duke of Winter, and he is like in love with her and like has to make her his bride. And sort of not enemies to lovers because she's not mad at him or anything. It's just like a, I guess it's like then there was you sort of trope or it's always been you <laughs> sort of trope. So it's a, it's a good book. I really enjoyed it. So Devin and Viola have a good romance and some fun things happen. It's a lot of humor. I really enjoyed the wallflower aspect of Viola. And just the humor of Eloisa James and the good storytelling. Love Eloisa James. If you like the Bridgerton books, definitely check out the Wilds of Winlow Castle series. And this is book five, Say Yes to the Duke. I gave this five stars. It was excellent. And my final book that I'm reading now in September, I'll probably finish in October. This was also recommended a lot from... Peace Love Books XO, aka Jessica or Jess, and I believe Books with Samantha also talked about this book, and this is The Pool Boy by Nikki Sloan. I'm only about 16 pages into it. Um, really fun character. Um, does he even say their names yet? <laughs> no. But um, this has been good so far. I look forward to finishing this. I believe this is a little more mature. I mean, on the cover it says you're going to get wet. So, you know, not really PG over here, but it hasn't done anything insane yet. So I'll let y'all know in my next vlog. Um, thank you for joining me for my first video. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please um, like use, use the like button and please subscribe for more. I hope to do a lot of content related to books, especially romance books to some beauty and also some handbags. Have a wonderful day and I hope to see you again for another video. Bye-bye.